Hello, welcome to this model making tutorial. My name is Rice Maiden, and today I'll be going over how to assemble my version of the Star Citizen Origin 300 series of ship. A number of you have recently purchased ship model kits from me, and so this video serves as a tutorial on how to put those together. Intros aside, hopefully today I'll be able to show you not only how to put it together, but also some tips and tricks on how to make it as painless as possible. As, you've can, as you can see, I have assembled and built all four of the in-game variants of the 300 series. The 300i, the 315p, the 325a, and the 350r. Now I won't be going over how to build all of them, but I will be building the 300i and then telling you about the differences between the other three, and hopefully that'll serve as a good enough tutorial since they aren't really that complex and the differences aren't that drastic. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm going to turn off the other three models and concentrate on the 300i. Uh, apologies if I am a little erratic with the mouse. I'm kind of twitchy fingered like that. So apologies if uh, things get a little hectic. To begin with, the model itself is relatively simple. I would suggest putting the model together in three build sessions. Um, that should give time for the assemblies that you have to dry. Uh, so when you glue them all together, nothing shifts on you. I put my models together typically with the uh, Alini's Tacky Glue uh, that you can find in most craft stores and supermarkets. However, you're welcome to put it together with whatever kind of wood glue you want. Um, just keep in mind that the 3D printed parts not don't always play nice with some kinds of glue. I will say that uh, before I continue, um, in the model, these white pieces are the wood, um, the laser cut wood, and the yellow pieces are going to be the 3D printed parts that you get. If you've purchased a kit from me, the 3D printed parts will be white um, in, the, in the model, or sorry, in the kit. So to begin with, the first assembly on the 300i that we're going to work at putting together is going to be the central ribs. And that's this guy right here. As you can see, the central ribs are basically a bunch of just pieces laid on top of each other with uh, some 3D printed parts, capping, and your motor on the back. To put this together, um, I would recommend pulling out all of these... Um, these rib pieces here. Uh, they're only used during this assembly, uh, so if you pull them out and set them aside, you should be in pretty good shape. As you just saw, there are these pieces that go in the center. Um, the one in the front is slightly longer than the one in the back, as you can see, um, and I'll explain why that is uh, in a little bit. However, just be careful that you use them in the right place. Um, Hopefully, when you put this together, um, this assembly in particular, you should be able to assemble loosely uh, without using glue at first, just to make sure you have everything. So if you put all these together and then slide these pieces in, it should hold together so you can look at it and go, yes, I put this together right, and then pull it apart, slap some glue in it, and uh, go from there. To begin with, we're going to work from the very first piece, which is the central rib. Um, now, differentiating all of these rib pieces to, uh, apart from each other might seem like a daunting task at first, but um, the things that we're going to look out for are whether or not the rib has these uh, tail pieces here, and, or not, and also whether or not the um, central rib has... Uh, you call it features that go in this hatch. Uh, as you can see, the central rib is going to have the longest feature, and as they diverge from the center, they're going to get smaller and smaller in this area. We can also triple check by looking at the cockpit. The cockpit's center section is going to be the highest, with it diving off to the sides. So if we start at the first piece, the center, um, this will be basically the base of this assembly. As you can see, pieces are symmetric about this. So what you do on one side of this is going to be the exact same on the other. So putting on the second rib piece, as you can see, 
we're going to go for no tail on that piece. It's going to have a slightly smaller uh, hatch geometry and the cockpit's going to start diving away. Putting the next piece on, you'll see that once again, no tail. Uh, the hatch geometry gets smaller again and everything else is roughly the same. Now the next two pieces that we put on um, is start, going to start to vary a little bit more. There's still going to be no tail fin here. We're going to have no hatch geometry in the center here. Um, just in case that's confusing, here's the little hatch piece that you'll put on um, eventually. You could put it on now if you want or wait till the end. Um, this piece is going to have these little hooks on the front um, and they're going to be very different so that should make them stand out quite a bit. Finally we're going to put on the last big pieces on the central body. Um, these will contain two more tail fins um, but we'll also have these big square cutouts in the back and I'll get to what those are for here in a minute. At this point um, I would probably recommend that you, well, you can do it either way you want. I think when I assembled this, I got to this point, um, putting glue on in all the pieces, and then I shoved the, uh, the while well, the glue's still wet, I shoved these little guide pieces in, um, and it seemed to work out reasonably well, so um, that should hopefully work for you. At this point, um, there are some additional pieces that go on top of these, but they're going to be smaller in size. So on the front, let me see if I can get, okay, so, um, excuse me, on the rear, um, you're going to have this shaped piece, and its standout feature is probably going to be, you know, this, this face right here. It's going to have a little sharp thing there and a little sharp thing there. And then finally, uh, on top of that is going to be this uh, more so simpler piece. Moving to the front, um, let's see if I can find uh, the piece for this. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. Okay. So uh, there's one more piece that goes on the front, um, and it's this piece. Um, you can kind of tell what it is by this little notch thing here in the front um, and it'll slip on and kind of kind of look like this uh, at this point um, we can start putting 3d printed parts on the on the front we're going to have the um, these pieces now make sure you get them on in the right orientation as as you can see this 3d printed piece is going to basically mirror um, kind of the profile of that last wood piece you put on. So there'll be a little notch and it'll be facing the front end of the ship. Same goes with the other side. When you put this on, um, it should, uh, let me see if I can turn this off for you, uh, it will have a little hole and that should interact with the crossover piece that you put in previously. So it should all kind of fit together without much of a hassle. Um, turn all this back on. At this point, um, we can put on the rear engine cowling pieces. So these guys right here. Um, and as you can see, the little finny sections point backwards. And the, uh, the cowlings themselves have a square uh, boss, if you will, that interacts with the square that was previously in that piece that, that I had discussed. Um, so we'll go back to that. And then the last piece, uh, a 3D printing for this assembly, will be the engine. And it kind of nestles itself in between these two outer rib pieces. Um, and you can just glue that guy in there. Um, the, the top kind of just lines up with the wood. There's no other locating feature, so just kind of put it in there roughly in this position. You, sh you should be fine. The last piece of this assembly, as I pointed out earlier, is the hatch. Um, you should just be able to put some dabs of glue on it, press it in, and call it a day. At this point, this assembly is done. Um, you'll probably want to let this dry. However, with 
kind of the length of time it probably took to put this together, it might be good to go immediately. Once we're done with that, we'll set it aside and we'll put together the wings. Now the wings are relatively easy to put together. Uh, they contain just four pieces. You're going to want to start, um, and they're also symmetric, so make sure that you build them you know, as mirrors of each other. So the main thing to kind of keep in mind is that the this side of the, or the 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 base of the wing if you will is flat and the reason for that is that it basically butts straight up against your ri the ribs that we just put together so as long as you can keep these wings flat you should be able to butt it up against the, or as, as long as this this surface right here remains flat and vertical or, excuse me just flat in general you should be able to butt it up against the ship glue it and it'll be you know nice and even. The wings themselves don't have any locating features um, but they do have some some things that you can use to uh, kind of just you just basically eyeball it. Um, as you can see for these top pieces uh, I would recommend not assembling this very top piece till the end only because uh, it interacts with parts of this uh, bodywork here and so you can do this at the very end or when you're assembling this piece and it'll kind of go together better as opposed to just trying to eyeball it right now um, so if we if we get rid of that um, as you can see this this piece right here pretty unique it's basically this wing with a giant cutout in it um, as long as you line up this kind of rear edge right here you should be in good shape you can kind of eyeball where it goes. Now the bottom side is this other triangle shape. Its location is not critical. As you can see there's just a small gap in the front um, and then there's kind of a bigger gap back here. Just kind of put it where you know put it roughly close and you'll be in good shape. That'll finish off the wings. You will want to set these aside and let them dry um, especially because when you put these against the ribs you don't want them moving around. You kind of want them to be you know this nice even and level thing so once that's dry we are going to assemble the wings um, as I stated uh, they basically oops, let's uh, okay you're gonna be basically with you're gonna be you're gonna have the main rib assembly and you're gonna have these wings and you're basically gonna just pop them there uh, as you can see there is one locating feature for the where the wings go and that is uh, this right here so without the wings on, you can see that there's a ledge and a little tiny lip here. And what you're going to want to do is take those wings and just basically put it in there and butt it up against the, the, the lip right there. And that should hopefully give you, you know, the location of the wings and keep them level. You can see there's a small gap up here. Um, I would recommend that you know you maintain that small gap just so that everything else up here fits together well. After we get both of those sides on um, we can move to putting on the skin of the ship. Now the skin of the ship as I can turn on and off here is going to be the bodywork on the sides. To do so I would recommend doing this um, two approaches if you were to slice the ship down the center uh, where the wings are I would recommend putting the front bodywork on front to back and the rear bodywork on back to front so let's see if we can do this the first thing that we can do is put on the oops didn't mean to get rid of that um, put on these little nose pads they're two of the same piece um, they kinda look like this little rounded rounded edge with a with a V on the back um, and there's gonna be four of those pieces two on each side they're gonna be the same just glue them together um, the rounded end or the rounder end goes towards the front and it basically does this little V shape where it's going to be bracing itself across your ribs and it's gonna intersect with your uh, rib right here so let's turn that back on, as you can see, um, and you should be in good shape. Next on top of that, what's going to happen is we're going to basically build out the bodywork from there. So 
uh, on top of this piece sandwich between the body and in this kind of little trough here you're gonna have um, this kind of spiky piece and as you can see there's a little cutout here for where it intersects with the cockpit and it's gonna come back after that most of these pieces lay on the 3d printed material quite evenly so um, I'm going to kind of go over this a little bit quickly. Um, you should be able to put this together just by looking at the shapes that I have. Um, as you can see on the underside, you're going to have these kind of long diagonal cut pieces. Um, and you're going to have two of them. Let me turn off the wings. So you're going to have this kind of odd looking shape here. That's going to be the center of the underside. On the front of that, you have a, a shape that kind of comes back with this diagonal cut. In the center, you're going to have this kind of uh, just two diagonal cut. Um, moving back from there, now when we get back to this point, um, as you can see, we've lost that 3D printed piece to kind of give us support. So at this point, what I would recommend is uh, you can, so if you get to this point here, kind of building this bodywork back, um, here I would recommend building from the back forward or starting back here and meeting in the center. So as you can see, the back is made up of just these two cowling pieces. Um, one of them goes on top. As you can see, it just lays on top of the little piece that we put in earlier. And the bottom does the same. Um, if you want kind of a location for these, uh, this top piece sits on top of here and butts up against this ribbing uh, that we assembled earlier. So it should just kind of sit right there. Um, as far as the bottom goes, uh, this guy right here, again, sits on that cowling piece we had and butts up against uh, this notch in the ribbing that we assembled earlier. So as you can see, the top piece butts up against this, the bottom piece butts up against this. So once we get that, uh, we have this piece, which goes, as you can see, there's a bit of an overlap. Um, you could probably just glue that flush. It's probably not, I, I have a little bit of a gap in the model. Honestly, nobody's, I mean, if you glue it flush, it's going to be perfectly fine. Um, once you have that glued flush, you should only have this piece left um, in terms of having this bottom skin completed on the ship. Uh, on top of it, you can glue this piece, and this piece kind of, sorry, this piece here kind of floats in space a bit. I mean, it doesn't really float, but as you can see, it just kind of, you know, it, it sits against the ribbing, it connects with this, and, excuse me, uh, it kind of just kind of exists right here. You should be able to touch it against these three components and with some glue and be perfectly fine. Um, as you can see, this piece is a little unique because it has that little cutout. Um, and then at this point, this is either finishing out the side profile or you're going to finish the rest of the front um, now that you have the underside and the rear done. Um, as you can see, this is kind of the buildup of these pieces uh, on the front. Um, again, you're going to have these long, narrow pieces up here, mostly square, and then it's going to terminate in this triangle piece. Underneath of that, you're going to have kind of this divergent piece, and then these lower central pieces have these little S-wiggles in them um, that lock together. And then finally, your final piece here is going to look like this. Um, as you just saw, uh, this piece right here tucks in between the 3D printed part here and this ribbing we put in earlier. Um, and then of course you have this piece. Uh, let's see, you got this piece here. Um, and they're gonna have, these lower pieces are gonna have these curved intersections Again, they're not. It's not. They're, these pieces aren't big, um, but it should be relatively easy to tell which ones are apart, um, just kind of based on these little locating features I have. 
And then of course the bottom, and I would recommend doing this skin bottom up. So put in this lower layer, put in the next layer, put in the next layer, and then you should hopefully be fin finishing with these, or with these two pieces right here. Um, and then when you're done with that, you can move on to the next side. And again, everything over here is just a mirror of the other side. So you should have two of all of these pieces. Um, once again, running over this. Uh, so this guy, slant cut, that. Um, actually, I think it should be pretty straightforward at that point. Now, up to this point, I have not pointed out the differences in the other models. Hopefully, you're watching this to fully before putting your ship model together for the first time. Um, and I can go over kind of where those differences are. When you look at the 300i, it's got what I like to consider a, the basic model. When you move to the th when you move to, excuse me, when you move to the 325a, its body is basically the same um, from a, you know, this big intake standpoint and how everything stacks up. So if you have a 325a, the body work should be roughly the same for what I've just discussed. Um, the only differences in it are that you put more guns on it. So you have a central gun here and you got the two guns on the wings and the two missile racks. Uh, otherwise everything else should be the same. When you move to the 315P, uh, its bodywork is a little bit different. Um, when you get up to this area around the intake here, uh, as you can see, we just had the ribs and the side work. Uh, the 315P has a couple extra ribs here. So you can see that there's this piece here that kind of adds a fairing towards the back and this other piece that kind of adds a little more fascia to that intake. The other difference is that the motor is different. It's bigger, so as you can see, uh, the 315P has this you know, same interaction, same engine cowling kind of thing going on here, but the engine is much bigger and kind of sits in a recess. Um, there's also this central piece that bridges those two rear cowlings, so hopefully that's not that difficult, it's just more material. And finally, if you are building the 350R, um, I would, so the 350R is a little bit different from the standpoint that we are not going to have, uh, on these these two outer ribs, they're not gonna have those squares that, that this had. So this has a square to locate that rear cowling piece. The 350R is not gonna have that. Um, as you can see, the rear end is a little bit different. Uh, your, met, your main rib is gonna have this little dorsal fin now as well as when you build it out you're gonna have this little like um, little air cavity diffuser thing. The intakes on this ship are different um, as you can see instead of the one big intake you now have two inline little intakes but as I stated earlier for lack of anything else you should still be able to identify the stack up of ribs based on these forks on the front, uh, how this kind of assembly works, the cockpit diving out from the center rib, and also the center, the upper hatch should be the same. So you have this big boss in the center, they get smaller as you go out to the extents. Um, the skin otherwise will be the same on this. And then on, on the uh, 350R, you will also have these two additional intakes down here. And the way you build those is it's just two additional pieces. So when you put this ship together, um, instead of having the flat bottom that you got here that kind of dives away to the wings, you're going to have um, the starts of these two little intakes. And when you're done, and I'd recommend doing it at the end after you have the wings assembled, you're going to you're going to slap on uh, the outer little riblets. So um, the first one's going to look like this. So so this is what the first one looks like uh, right here. And then you can identify it because it's going to have a notch here where the intake is. And then on top of that, you're going to get the outer piece. And it's going to look exactly the same, except it's not going to have a notch here. And that's going to complete your two little intakes. Going back to the back of the 350R, uh, 
the cowling design is somewhat similar. Um, you're still going to have these features that help you locate uh, where that that outer skin goes, and they're still going to lock into um, uh, the features up here that I mentioned. So that upper cowling is going to butt up against this part of the rib, and the lower cowling is going to butt up against this part of the rib. Now these motors, uh, as you may have noticed, do not have those locating features um, that this guy does. But that's okay because the motors themselves are going to fit into this profile right here. So uh, if we get rid of all of this, as you can see, the motors themselves, again, follow the contour of the rear of those ribs. So if you've assembled it properly, um, when you finish the rib work on this, uh, this on the 350R, you should be left with, um, and I'm just going to kind of get rid of a little bit of this, uh, you should be looking at something that looks roughly this, where you have these two models that fit into these, this, this profile back here, and they're just going to be glued on, you know, straight to the wood. Um, once that dries again, you can put your skin on top of it. So hopefully that covers all of the changes between the different models. Uh, again, 350R has uh, a difference in intakes up here, really shouldn't change how the, the ribs work. You have the additional wood, two wood pieces on each side for the intakes, and you have the difference in how the rear motors are set up. Uh, 325A is the same as the 300I, except it's just got more weapons. Um, the 315P, the rear end on it is set up a little bit differently. However, you should have, um, you know, you have this ex you have these extra ribbings here to put it together with. Um, as you can see, this is kind of that extra ribbing has, you know, looks a bit wild, but should be relatively easy to identify and put together. Um, and uh, I guess the 315P has the full tractor beam on the front, so. Don't forget to put your tractor beam on. So moving back to the 300i, uh, we can finish this guy out by putting the uh, putting the tops on. So this is where we should be at. We should have our rib work done, we should have our wings done, and we should have the skin done. Now we just need to put on the top part of the wing right here. To do so, um, the, uh, the best way to go about doing this is to assemble this first. So you're going to have this little lightning bolt shaped guy and it's going to have a little notch and it's going to go on the end of your wing. As you can see it's rotated in a little bit and that should be easy to figure out because you're going to put this guy on here and you're basically going to lean it against the the upper piece uh, in the fashion I have shown. Then at that point um, you're going to want to, so if you get to this point, um, you're going to want to take pretty much the only square piece in this kit uh, and glue it to the top of your your triple tail fin stack up here. Um, you'll notice that the front wing is a little bit more forward than the others so don't let that bother you. Um, once you're at that point you can brace it with the uh, where is it? Um, right here. So these wing pieces up here um, just Put a strip of glue on the top and put a strip of glue on the bottom. Should hold itself together quite fine. You'll notice that this piece has a little bit of a um, little bit of a hook at the end, and that goes on the outside. Uh, as you can see, the uh, the wing in the model doesn't perfectly line up with this, but you know you can play with it and see what what fits best. Um, the final piece we have is the interior wing struts, so right here, um, and these pieces are going to be easy to identify because uh, they will look like the lightning bolt pieces except not as extreme, have a little tiny notch on one end and the front will be clipped. Uh, we'll take these pieces and when we get our wing assembly here, uh, it should just, so if you put it in and slide it over, uh, it should fit just fine. Um, what happened to my... Um, 
Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was getting worried there. So again, this piece will slide in, butt up against this, and kind of brace your two wings. Once you're at that point, it's just putting the weapons on. Uh, the weapons have no real locating features, so I'd recommend putting, um, when you put them on, put a dab of super glue on them just so that they cure nice and fast so they don't sag or anything uh, while they cure. And that should be it. That should be putting together your 300i. I'd recommend letting the ship cure fully before flying it around like a little kid and uh, making pew pew noises at your loved ones. Um, and at that point, I uh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, it's taken me it's taken me quite a number of takes to get through this. So uh, I'm just glad it's done. Um, look forward to more ship models from me in the future, as well as more ship model tutorials as I kind of slowly get permission from CIG to sell a couple models here and there. Thank you for your time, and feel free to uh, send me a comment or email me if you have any questions, and uh, happy building!